Hi everyone, welcome back to Mr. Gard's Maths lesson. Today we're going to be covering the topic dividing a quantity in a given ratio. That means we're talking about having a quantity of something and dividing it up into a ratio that has been given to us. So it's really important to remember those two points. Ratios are similar to fractions. There is one slight difference, but firstly, we can think of ratios as parts of a whole. So in this little example that I've got down here, we are looking at a mix of water and cordial, just like you might do at home. Now, it's really important, as mentioned in previous lessons, that you have the ratios around the correct way. In this case, it would taste pretty gross if you had four parts cordial to one part water. But in this case, we have it four parts of water to one part cordial. And if I was to draw this, and we were using green cordial, it would look something like that. That might be my cordial component. And let's draw the water in blue. So we'd have one part, two parts, three parts, and four four parts, all water. Now, the grand total is that we have five parts, and that's what's really important. We have five parts in total. Now, therefore, our fractions, so the amount of water in this case, we have four-fifths is water, and one-fifth is going to be cordial. Now, that's one little area that really confuses people. There are five parts in this drink, not four parts, as we commonly can make a mistake on. So let's do a couple of questions. If I have two people, so we're looking at this one on the purple uh, sticky note. If I have two people sharing $120 evenly, we know straight away that each person would receive $60. That's kind of easy. But the reason that works is as follows. They're going to be in a ratio of one to one which means in total, there are going to be two parts. Each person in this scenario is getting one part out of two. So it's going to be one half, oops, sorry, one half plus one half. Which is going to be one whole. But it is also important to note that one half multiplied by $120 is equal to $60. We're going to multiply that individual person's fraction by the total amount. And that was the answer that we expected, $60. Now, if those two people were splitting that $120 into a ratio of 3 to 2, it's important to note that there are, in this case, five parts in total, the three for one person and two for the other person. So this time their ratio is actually going to be three-fifths for one guy and two-fifths for the other person. When we multiply each person's fraction by the total amount, we're going to end up with 72 for this person and the person that got two-fifths will end up with $48. So we get two different amounts. Now it's also important to make sure, do they seem right? And in this case, they do. One, per, one person is getting a little bit more than the other. 
Now we're going to use the method called the unit, unitary method. The wording around the word unit means one. So in this case, we're going to work out what one part of the ratio is worth. So if I gave you the scenario of, let's say, $54, divided into a ratio of let's just make it into five parts to four parts the total parts are nine everyone should be happy with that there are five parts to one person four parts to the other person now we want to work out what the value is of one part so if 50, if 50, sorry, if $54 equals nine parts, we can work out therefore that one part is equal to Sorry, my hand keeps touching the wrong part. Six dollars. The one part is going to be six dollars because I divided this side by nine and I divided this side by nine. One part is six dollars. I can then now work out that in my ratio of five to four that this side is going to be thirty dollars. This side is going to be $24. That works because when I add them together, I equal $54. Using the fractions method. This time I'm going to have it as four ninths. So we're using the same question and we have five ninths. So that was the ratio of the two people's um, amounts. I can then multiply both of those by the total if I do some cancelling cancel that turn that into a 1 cancel that turn that into a 6 because I divided both by 9 I equal 24 over 1 and on this side same deal I divide both sides by 9 and that's another way of solving the same problem so in the yellow we turned it into finding out what one part is in the green we just did it simply as a fraction and multiply that fraction of the person's worth by their total amount Finally, I'm going to do a slightly more complicated question, this time splitting a similar amount, $150, between three people. And the three people don't get an equal share. We have Jim, Bob and Tom. Jim gets two parts, Bob gets three parts and Tom gets one part. First step is to work out the number of total parts and we simply do that by adding 2 plus 3 plus 1 so equals 6. We can do it either using the unitary method or the fractions method but if we did the unitary method we would need to divide $150 divided by 6 equals uh, $25. So one part equals $25. Therefore, Jim will receive $50. Bob will receive $75. And Tom will get just $25.
This can always be checked by ensuring that they all add up to the same amount or they add up to the total. So that's all from today's lesson. Thank you for listening.